Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to the new path feature for Cartoon Animator 5.2 that allows you to quickly and intuitively define where and how objects in your scene will move. With the path feature, you can decide the beginning and end positions of your object movement along with the offset, and a single path can also be shared with other objects. Paths can save both shape and transform data. If you've just updated to 5.2, first ensure that you download the Puppet and Path Pack under Free Resources. Set the filter to All and refresh the Content Manager if you don't see it yet. You can create a path from the Create menu at the top and also with the button on the left toolbar. When creating points, a single click will create simple path points, while if you click and hold the left mouse you can create a Bezier curve. Clicking on each point will bring up a transform gizmo that allows you to change the position of the point, and you can also adjust the Bezier control points to adjust the curve as well. Right-clicking on a path point will allow you to change the curve type to linear, Bezier, or smooth. You can multi-select points and do the same. If you click on Add Points in the Path Properties window, you can tack on additional path points from the last one selected. Selecting the Close Path checkbox will make a beeline from the first to the last path points to close the loop. Let's throw this airplane into our scene and right click on it to bring up the path options. Here we can select Pick Path, or we can also open up the Path Properties from the left toolbar and pick from there with the eyedropper tool. The starting position will default to the relative place that you clicked your mouse, and you can easily click Detach from Path to free it from the path constraint. The Progression parameter allows you to determine the position of the path in terms of percent. 0 will be at the beginning, and 100 will be at the end. If you click on Follow Path, your object will follow along the path according to its specified local axis. In this case, we want the Y axis. If you have progression set for drag mode, you can click and drag your object, but it will still be constrained to the defined path. In offset mode, you can click and drag the object anywhere in your viewport, but it will still follow the path, just offset by the amount you defined. To see the progress of an object along a path, simply scrub further down the timeline, and then move the progression slider to whichever position you like. The path in your viewport will change to a dashed line. Currently the dashes are all even, indicating a uniform progression along the path. You will also see a keyframe placed in the path progress track where you define the path position using the progression slider. You can right click this keyframe and add a transition curve to define the rate of its movement along the path. And you'll notice that the dashes are now spaced according to the transition curve preset that you chose. One cool little feature is that in the path properties you can click generate keys to generate some transform keys for your prop. You can also save your path in the custom tab of the content manager, so you can utilize it in the future with different objects as well. I can load up the path in a new project, bringing in this additional prop here, and assign it to our saved path. When we apply it, we have the option now to follow the path points or the path keyframes which we generated earlier. What you choose here simply depends on if and how you want to edit the movement later on. Also, don't forget to set the correct follow axis according to your object. There are also a number of embedded path templates available in the Puppet and Path free resource pack as well. You can see that this first one has sharp turns and can be useful for something like simulating an old top-down Atari game. As with all paths, you can freely edit the points and test out the results.
The second one could be used in combination with scaling to simulate something coming gradually closer to the viewer. Let's look at a couple of fun editing scenarios next. Right now we have this racing car following along a path we've set up, and you can see that there are a couple of keyframes defined in the path progress track. It looks cool, but we can make it even cooler by using the offset feature to create a drift. To do this, I'll go to the moment right before the car hits the turn and set a keyframe in the path offset track by double clicking, which will act as the start of our drift. Then, as it is midway through the turn, I'll rotate it, which will generate another keyframe in the offset track. Coming out of the turn, I can simply hit Reset Offset to restore the values back to default. Now we have a much cooler drift along the path. In this second scenario, I'll use some transition curve presets to create a more dynamic movement along this roller coaster path, since now it's too uniform. I'll start by going to frame 188 and adjusting our progression slider a bit further back. This will be the start of our edit. At frame 194, I can repeat the same process. What this will do is create slower movement between those two keyframes right before the big fall. I'll then add a decelerate transition to the first keyframe, which means the roller coaster will get slower as it approaches. Then on the last keyframe, which represents the end position, I'll add an accelerate transition, which will create a cool acceleration as the carriage goes down the hill. That's about it for this tutorial guys. Hopefully you learned the basics of how you can use the path tool to enhance your animations. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.